are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WHOA GNV Podcast, the coronavirus sessions, where our temporary mission is to save as many businesses and jobs as possible by sharing how your fellow business owners and professionals are navigating the impact of COVID-19. I am your host, Colin Austin, and my co-host is Michael Dees. (laughs) <laughs> What's going on, man? Already having a good time this morning. Yeah, I'm having a great time. Look, if you check out my my virtual uh, background here on... My- it looks like Tech City. I wonder why you picked Tech City today. Yeah, we're here at Tech City. I can't wait to introduce our guest today. He's a famous, famous, famous podcast guest. Uh, he <laughs> has been known he, for, for dropping in on random shows. and uh, I hear he's a fantastic pizza delivery guy, too. Yeah, that's what I hear. So I can't, can't wait to get into it. But before we introduce him... Yeah, let's do some ahead. sponsors. Some sponsors, yeah. Mike, go. Yeah, so we've got Brooker Pest Control again. Dude, are you working outside a lot these days? That's yeah. a question. Yeah. yeah. Have you yeah. noticed it's <laughs> on the back porch a lot and you can see. Yeah. It. Have you noticed it's like feast time for the mosquitoes? Yeah, man. Do you wish you could control those mosquitoes? Yes. Brooker Pest Control can. <laughs> Did you get a new pet like me and now you're worried about fleas and ticks? No, the thank goodness. Pest Control has your back there too. <laughs> I have a new home being built. Well, you need to have it properly soil treated for termites with a damage repair warranty. Did you think about that? Well, Brooker Pest Control did. Give them a shout out at 352-378-2433. Or you can find them online at brookerpestcontrol.com and they will hook you up with all of your needs. Yeah, dude, I saw Karen the other day because he, he messaged like, hey, you guys getting back to normal at the dealership and you mean come by? I'm like, yeah, dude, come on by. I also came by my house. Man, the guy's just, he's just glowing. He's just a really, really he's awesome great. guy. They got, he's they got, got one of those, great. he's got one of those infectious smiles. Like you just yeah. see him smile and you're like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> it's great because this time I could see him smiling like behind his mask though. You know, like <laughs> you like, just like the top here. <laughs> so no, like it was, he's. He's great. They got a great team over there at Booker Pest Control. So definitely uh, definitely support them, you guys. And look, today, like, like, let's talk about how this coronavirus has impacted your business. Maybe you've realized you need a different kind of office space or you have questions about your lease options. Or maybe you've been thinking about buying or selling a commercial property, but you're not sure when to act. Call the team at Collier's International Gainesville. They have the expertise and local experience to help you make the right decision for your commercial real estate needs. Check out their services at Collier's.com slash Gainesville. Thank you, Dan Drodos and team, for your support of this podcast. Right, Mitch? Absolutely. <laughs> good to see you guys today. I, uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, today's sponsor is Collier's because we're raving fans of theirs. Um, Dan and his team, uh, they actually handle all of our real estate needs. I, you know, a lot of people don't know, but Glazer Realty, which we also own, and we all also operate. We sell homes. We do a lot of different things. Of course, I'm very involved in commercial, the commercial side of the world as well. But I'm really focused on the kind of the development side. And I will tell you that Dan and his team do handle all of our commercial needs. They have all of our stuff listed. Um, and, and I also use him as a resource. Like you said, at this particular time of trying to figure out, you know, what to do, I would highly recommend uh, Dan Grotis and his team at Collier's. Um, we've used them for a number of years um, and have, have had nothing but fantastic results. So. I'm glad he's a sponsor. I'm glad he's a sponsor today. Dan yeah, Schroeder. I'm super, super honored to have him as a, as a sponsor. He's been yeah. a glowing endorsement. Glowing, yeah, got a glowing endorsement on today's episode. Well, so I well, mean, if, if my endorsement's if, worth anything, of course, yeah. <laughs> that's debatable. <laughs> but, but, uh, it's good. We love everybody, Dan. Everybody who's listening today, I mean, they should if they've listened to our podcast before, they should be very familiar with who you are um and you know and like you're the only guest who's i mean i don't know many guests who've been on twice but you know now we have, we've had a couple but now we have this is like this is number this is number three and yep. uh and you know i wanted to i wanted to do this because i wanted to get you on on these coronavirus uh episodes because i really wanted i really wanted to get your perspective on some of what, yeah. what's, what's been happening uh within you know within the you know gainesville and our surrounding area um so, but why don't you like just kind of tell us of some of the impact that you have seen and experienced and, uh, yeah. and we'll dive into some more. 
So first of all, I want you know this isn't just a, a pat on the back or a gratuitous kind of uh, fluffing of your ego or anything, but I really do want to give you high props, both of you, for um, Mike. Pay don't... attention. Yeah. Yeah. Pay attention, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Even though you're not going to retire for like what is it, thirty six more years or something. You know, you know. <laughs> um, no, in all sincerity, I think the series that you have been doing is extremely valuable to a lot of people. Um, it's it's interesting to see how people have navigated this uh, time, and you know they they talk all these new terms have come up, you know, about the new norms and different kinds of things. But the reality is that in any given period of time, I don't care if it's an expansion of the economy or a, a recession, depression recessions, which we have uh, historically, um, you know, through time, it's an opportunity for businesses to truly um, self-reflect and figure out what's working and what's not. But there's also, a, a, sincerely, a, a and doc, well documented. I mean, this is not something I'm just saying, but there are opportunities that emerge out of times like this. Um, it doesn't take you, but uh, about a 10-second Google uh, research. Um, search to figure out that a lot of very most most successful businesses and the, pro, the uh, probability of success of a company starting in a recession period of time will have a much greater likelihood of success and being a long-term company than during any other period of time and so you know there's um, a lot of proverbial kind of sayings out there that uh, you know the reason you hear them a lot is they are very true and they're valuable to how we literally navigate this period of time. So the one you can think of is, is glass half full or is it half empty? Um, and so it's how you treat the situation is really going to uh, have the lasting impact as to how you come out of it. Um, so I will tell you for us, there's a couple of things that we've learned. Um, first, um, and this took a historical look back to realize this but this has been the great accelerator so companies that were you know on the edge of of, of their existence are gone it was it pretty much took an x factor to what was going on within each company if you're an expanding company you've probably seen greater expansion and you see that with um you know uh, some of the delivery service companies are growing over time and so forth i don't want to end it be individual uh, because I don't know the specific details and percentages and, and so forth. Um, so for us on the front end, it was a pretty simple, easy solution once we figured out pretty early on, um, candidly, that things were, were going to start going off the rails, especially in the commercial arena sector and, and for that matter, even residential rentals and apartments and so forth, which we do have a few. Um, so we we own and operate about 400, oh, just over I think 400,000 square feet of commercial space. We also have several businesses. We have Logo Kick. I have a store hotel. I've got a bar. We have um, out west coast. We have some IT companies. We have um, a roofing company. There's just a lot of different silos in terms of what we operate out of the Emory Group. Um, and so we had to do more than just the real estate solution. We had to start looking at you know, these other components. Take hospitality as an example. Uh, the hotel is, uh, of course, hemorrhaging uh, right now because no one is traveling. Um, contrast that to the bar that I own, which is completely shut down and still is not open, and I won't open it until we really have a solid, solid green light on uh, that being a smart move. Um, and so, yeah, we got busy, and so we took every single entity and we started putting a kind of a different game plan together. Um, and so on the commercial real estate side, on the real estate side of things, we have, I think, in excess of 80 leases that we deal with. Um, and it's everything from mom and pops to very, very, to uh, we have a high-tech laboratory up at the, uh, big, I almost said Big Hill, uh, at uh, Warner Robins Air Force Base. Um, my dad was stationed at McDill, and so that always is on the top of the head. Um, but we started hitting them with emails and in and, and every single one of our accounts saying, okay, here's uh, here's the state program, here's the PPP, here's 
the Chamber of Commerce, here's the State Chamber, the National Chamber, have you contacted your legislator, have you contacted the IRS, have you contacted, um, you know, all your industry resources? Because we knew that they were going to be coming back to us, which you've seen some national stuff from, I mean, people even like the Cheesecake Factory not paying their rent. Um, we knew that they were going to come back to us and say, hey, uh, it's on you. And of course, we still have obligations, of course. Um, this, these projects are not built with cash, they're built with, with financed um, you know, lending from banks and a myriad of other sources. So we still had those obligations and what we wanted to do was to inform and empower and work with, call it partner, it's not really a partnership, but partner with our current leaseholders to say, look, you need to get well informed, be very aggressive in this and make sure that you're doing the right things early on. So email, 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 email. And then we had a few, very few actually, and I don't know, under five, um, actually come to us us and ask for some kind of uh, uh, structure, restructure, if you will, um, which we were able to actually navigate through that very, um, as a partnership, understanding that um, where their situation was and to try to really help them. So we had a questionnaire that we sent out to them as well. So it was about 15 questions and it basically let us know that they had gone through all of those processes um, because quite candidly, um, some businesses don't qualify for PPP as an example, uh, even though they have um, uh, employees who are more, um, I forget the term actually, uh, um, uh, contract labor, what we'll call it that. So um, those forms of, of interaction with the companies, we have them year in, year out, those kinds of things, those people you know, obviously didn't qualify or even some companies who are one person, right? So they don't pay themselves a traditional payroll the same way. So we work with those companies and we've been able to kind of get through this and, and that kind of takes us to, to today. Um, so everything's being held together. Uh, we're very encouraged. Uh, again, being proactive, being positive, energized, and, and really stay engaged with those people to constantly feed them. Now, obviously a lot of the companies do their resources, but again, I wanted to make sure they had it. So that's what we did. Stay very engaged with our clients. Yeah, it's funny. Mitch is one of those guests, Mike, where like I'm like writing down questions and then he just goes ahead and answers them. <laughs> <laughs> because like well, I, was, I, have a lot, I have a lot more to talk about too. I, mean, I was going to ask like all the, I'm like I'm like oh I was like I wonder if anybody's like having trouble paying their rent. So they're doing about that. Yeah, right. Just kind of keep going. I'm like yeah, this is great. Uh, I mean, well, like, I'm so I, I do, you know, one of the important things, and this is, this is really, this is starting from the beginning. I think this really highlights the value of customer relationships in the beginning, right? If you don't have those, then you don't know your client's business. I mean, look, I don't run anybody else's business or even tell them, even pretend to tell them how to do it. But it is a solid relationship that they can have a transparent, and confidential you know, conversation. Um, we had one of our very large tenants, quite honestly, who also was looking for some, um, uh, you know, uh, put it down the road kind of payment stuff. And they uh, actually, uh, <laughs> they had contacted us and said, hey, we saw, you're going to laugh at this call. And I don't know if you know, uh, I don't think I've told you this story, but they actually said they saw the blog out of Tech City online. This is a, this is a very big company. This, and, was the uh, blog, this was the vlog that we I did had. out of Tech City. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they saw the vlog at Tech City and they said, hey, we have all this space. You know, people are going to start working remote. And, you know, we figured out that, hey, if you can lease our space, then we want to take some space in Tech City. Um, I'm going to kind of fast forward because I think there's a lot of other cool things to talk about today um, that are actually positive and going on in our region that, I, that are not getting the notoriety that I think people need to know. Uh, to kind of figure out that things are happening and they are the momentum is positive. Um, you know, we've often talked about, you can talk about the bad things if you want, but really, truly, uh, the more people are informed about what is kind of happening in, in our region, and the, the more that will happen uh, on the heels of that. So this company, I, I let about 10 days go by and I said, you know, 
if I'm going to show their space and they're going to move out to build something at Tech City is going to take, I don't know, three months or whatever, you know, if I have existing space or if I build a brand new building, it will take eight months. So I, I called them up and I said, look, here's what I can do. I can give you this space and I'll give it to you for free. And then I'll lease your other space because I knew that if I showed their other space, they could move out for six months, right? So nobody goes and looks at the space and says, oh, y'all wait six months to get a hold of it and then take six months to put in what they want. So I just got creative, got proactive and called them up. Well, the moral of the story is, he said, you're not going to believe this, but our company has just come down with a directive that says our minimum our, our minimum square footage per person moving forward for a very, very long time, this is going to stick, went from 170 square feet per person to 220 square feet per person. So it's over a 30% gain of space that they need, even if they have less employees. And so he said, look, we don't want out. We're happy. We're there. We have a long-term lease with you. We're not going to Tech City. So it's a very interesting dynamic and very fluid right now. I think there's been some knee-jerk reaction by some to think that they have this crystal ball to know where the future is. I call them fools. Um, I'm fascinated that there's 7 billion people in the world, and there are 7 billion experts on coronavirus. Because every person you talk to I don't know how they know, but they magically know exactly what's going to happen. And it's, it's very um, fascinating to sit back and watch. I've actually taken notes on people's projections on all kinds of things that are going to happen in the future. And, um, you know, none of it's coming true because no one has a crystal ball. The things you have to do are kind of in the moment. And then you have to do that short-term, medium-term, and long-term planning that allows you to, to morph as the changes come. And so, um, you know, to that, I don't have a crystal ball. I will be the first to admit that I have no idea where this thing is headed. I mean, we were going to live in a paperless society by the year 2000, okay? We used more paper in the history of mankind than ever before last year, okay? Especially with all the toilet paper that you consume Colin <laughs> I saw your podcast the other day uh. yeah so in all sincerity I mean there's 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 no magic pathway there just isn't and I've watched your podcast and um, by the way I appreciate the shout out the other day I was watching um, I think it was uh, many mate uh, I forget the gal's name but anyways uh, you know, it, it, no one has, and everybody is just collectively learning from each other and kind of figuring this out. And, of course, then you throw in the politics and the dynamics that are right and left and all of that. You, you know, I, I had a person I was in discussion with the other day, and I said, I can ask you three questions and know your political affiliation. And they just laughed. I mean, it's true, though. And that's kind of where we are with a lot of people's assumptions about what is going to really happen. But... Um, so we've gotten very proactive. I will tell you, you know, for Tech City, um, you know, you can inject a question anytime you want, or I can keep answering them. <laughs> I'm like, I, this is the <laughs> only podcast I've ever done where I never had to ask a question. I'm, just, I'm always, you know, when I watch your podcast, you just talk too much, Colin. So I'm just, uh, hey, it's fine, man. Do you, do you think? Is it, isn't it true, just, Mike? Right? Yeah, just make, just make sure you end it with a good whoa, and we'll be set. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. I've got one. I've practiced for quite a while. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds like a whiny horse, I think. But cool, anyway. man, just, keep, just keep going. You're doing great. Well, no, I do want to, you know, some of the things that, are, that have been happening, um, you know, uh, you know, Thermo Fisher, you know, announced the other day that they had an expansion up here in Alachua. Um, I'm not sure how much folks knew about that. You've got Ology, who had a 53. Well, they've got a lot more than this because um, we've been uh, chatting with them and keeping close. But they, were, they announced a $53 million uh, project working on, you know, it's a bioscience company working on vaccine production. Um, and uh, they've had some high level, you know, visits from the Department of Defense. Some of the top brass has been over there to, um, you know, to just uh, take a peek and see what's going on over there. So we know Ology is expanding rapidly. They've got several things on the front that are happening. Um, you've got, you know, Orogenics. Um, actually, 
you know, another local company now working also in the COVID uh, vaccine uh, solution uh, realm as well. I mean, you've seen you've seen their stock go from 40 cents a share to 60 cents a share in the last 30 days. I mean, you're talking about a 50% you know, growth. You've got Harvest Health, which is the cannabis company that's next door. Um, they've gone from about uh, uh, in the 40 cent, maybe say 50 cent, 40 some odd cent range um, to a dollar 50 in the last like 30 days. Um, you've got deals that we've made. We've got uh, Wine and Spirits just opened a brand new store out of Tower Center in the middle of all of this. We signed a deal with um, Harvest Time. Everybody knows Harvest Time. Uh, we signed a deal for them to have a new uh, restaurant out of at Tower Center as well. They're on uh, Tower Road. Um, we got the 72 housing units are under construction out here at Tech City. Uh, so that's literally going on as we speak. Um, kind of cool to see uh, Shear Construction out here uh, doing their thing and, and EDA, uh, the engineering firm. Uh, you know, mapping it all out and everything. So that's fully under under construction. Um, I don't know, but if I mentioned it, but because um, I've been rattling off off the top of my head, but uh, you've got Education Station with their uh, brand new facility. It was actually done in, I believe, the end of January, and they, of course, this hit, and they um, put a pause button on it. They're going to open up on Monday with their kids will be out here, so that's going to be pretty cool to see in a matter of, uh, you know, uh, just a couple more days, that'll be up and running. So there's a ton happening. You had uh, up the street, you had Foundation Park. Uh, Seoul is the largest transaction that's taken place in the last five years, since 2015. You got AGTC that's located in there and, and um, uh, bio, uh, bio, uh, I forget how to pronounce her name, Bioagility, I believe, uh, is in there as well. Um, you've got the Sid Martin incubator, number one incubator in the world, completely full. Um, and then you have Lacerda, which is under construction with concept companies. Um, Ryan Crawford is doing a phenomenal job there for them. So they're building their brand new facility. Uh, I saw the uh, parking lot going in. So they're probably, I don't know this factually, but they're probably within you know, six weeks or so, I would imagine, from their uh, brand opening, uh, which is another emerging company up here uh, in Alachua. So there's just a ton going on, um, and it's fun to be a part of it and being a part of the conversations and part of the movement to help these things uh, happen and usher them along and actually bring exposure to them and those kinds of things as well. Um, on the housing front, we um, actually will have what we call the vertical, meaning the foundations, the walls, and all that. We'll start going up in about four months is our anticipated timeline with the first units being done first of the year. Um, so a lot of people, we've had an, an enormous amount of um, interest and in knowing exactly what's going up. Of course, we have everything from single family homes all the way through uh, what we call more townhome style living we have the stilts as well that are going up which is a cool cool design that pulls the house off the ground so the ground can remain pervious it means less area that we need to capture for stormwater runoff which is a sustainability effort that we have completely embraced up here um, because as you'll recall i mean this whole place is this is solar you know it's a solar power facility so um anyways you see them over here over the top of your head there colin in fact so Anyways. It was hard to believe it happened because of that vlog at Tech City. Yeah, dude, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is—I was about to say—the biggest. The, you know, I'm like, all right, we got to summarize this episode, and what what we've learned is that my vlog works. <laughs> like me, like. Well, I don't know about the S on the end of it, but it didn't even, work. It, it's not even it like work. It's not yeah, even it like, worked. Like, you know, it doesn't even really like. I don't even. I don't vlog to like. I, I tell people all this. I don't vlog to sell stuff. I vlog to build brand and to like, you know, show show behind the scenes of what's happening in my world and that kind of thing. So it's like really cool to hear that it works. This is great. <laughs> we, well, we pay we pay people like twenty dollars a, a, a watch, so that's the reason yeah. it's watched. It's cool. I mean, it's cool that it has been like it. 
provides value to others too. I mean, it's the same way, same way, same thing with the podcast, you know, it's like we, we get the opportunity to really build our community, which builds in doing so it builds our brand and we're doing so by giving value to our amazing guests, showing off what they're doing and, and hearing how they're giving value to others. So it's like, I don't yeah. know, it's kind of, it's the domino effect, man. It's cool to see it all play out. So, I mean, we, I mean, we do have to wrap up in a minute. You did a great job of uh, podcasting by yourself. You, don't even, you didn't even need us. We don't even, well, I, don't, I don't even know why we showed up today. That kind of saddens me for you to say that because I do want to interact with I just, you know, when you had called me the other day and said, hey, I want to have you on, and I, um, you know, had to slip you that $100 bill under the table. <laughs> I wish. Um, That's all it took. Uh, oh, Mike, you're supposed to get the – I gave him 200 it was I'm 200. not seeing it. It was one for it was one for you as well. Um, no, when you when you asked me that day, I was like, oh my gosh, Colin, you know, there's so much to talk about, you know. And sincerely, I mean, and I barely touched the tip of the iceberg on what's going on. Sure. There is, you know, I bet people don't turn on your television. I mean, not unless you're going to watch Lassie or uh, Andy Griffith show or something. It can get really, really, really bad very fast. As I, mean, I tell people, if if the person you're watching makes more than the average sports star in America, then they have an agenda. They have they they're they're basically they're working on their next big contract to be in front of your face again. And so that's I'm gonna leave that alone, but because I I'll, I'll really get going. But it, you you have to stay very motivated, very positive. I've worked with a lot of people about how to just sit down and take their business plan off the shelf, which they have not looked at in 40 forevers, and start figuring out what works. Figure out there's a lot of things that these companies have that are working, and you can expand on those. And then figure out what is not working, because a lot of times when the payroll is met and your obligations are met, you know, you're paying the car payment, the house payment, all that, you're like, you know what? I've got it on. I've got it on autopilot. Why in the world would I want to change direction? Because you don't know what direction it's going to head. That's it. That's what you think. Because you know, you may not be aspirational enough or visionary enough to know where your company could really go. And so, you know, I, I've sat people down and said, this is the time. You have an excuse. You have every excuse on the planet to be whatever company you are. Don't be embarrassed about making a change on something because you can always blame it on this period of time. Say, well, we had to do that because, and every person on the planet will understand. And so it's really an opportunity for these companies to reset because there will be companies bouncing out of the ashes, as I call it. They will literally merge out of very fast. They will bounce out. And because things are going to rebound, once things are fixed, I'll call it, and whatever that means in, in terms of spacing, in terms of vaccine, in, fact, in terms of a, a therapeutic concoction that's going to keep us healthy. Um, once that happens, you're not going to have time to sit down and figure these things out. So now is, now is the time. I would encourage some, you know, business owners of every size um, uh, to do that because it's an opportunity. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just not. So. Yeah. That's like, I mean, I was just going to say like what you're saying is, I mean, it's just so true. Um, you know, it's about like rising, rising out of the ashes or even, even like, I mean, some of the conversation <laughs> we had, uh, you know, Hey, I've been, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years and I'm like, I'm like, you know, if, I'm like, if this thing, which is not going to, and I mean, you know, you know, my pure drive and will, yeah. but I'm like, I was like, if this thing were to like put us out of business, you know, it'd be like, uh, I mean, at least we have it to blame it on. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Hey man. Yeah. I remember back in 2020, a pandemic, a pandemic came in, wiped my, you know, business out. There was nothing we could do about it. It was just, it was one of those, it was one of those. Okay. What I can that? promise you. I can promise you this: the story of that for any company that goes through that is not going to be the fact that you went down. It's about when you get up. 
Right. I remember, you know, and, and this is, I'm not making, there's so many things. I, I wish I was smart enough to like have my own sayings and whatever, but, <laughs> um, but I, I'm not. I surround myself with good people is what I think I do smartly. Um, and so, you know, I remember being in the hospital one time and my father came in and he said, you do realize it's not about being in that bed. He said, it's a matter of how fast you get up and get out. And that's, you know, that is so true right now. It's not going to be the fact that you were in the bed. It's going to be what people think of you when you come out of that. How did you respond to this situation? It's going to be what is remembered. Not the bad part, the part that you excelled at. Yeah. And that's what you have to position, you know. That's what a family has to do. That's what an individual has to do. That's what a company has to do. That's what a community has to do. I've had conversations with the city manager up here. and We've been, you know, working really hard with a lot of the different um, companies up here and different people who want to excel. This is an opportunity for this region to actually propel. Um, well, we passed our time probably. I mean, you're going to see one last thing I want to mention. And I, I actually wrote myself a note and dad gum and I forgot because the one thing you have heard, I'm, I'm sincere. Come on, Colin, don't laugh. I love it. When, when, when people, people say this is going to be the biggest transformation of wealth in you know, American history, this is the biggest transformation of talent, okay? You're going to see a lot of reshuffle of talent, and that's where our region could just have a grand slam home run because that is what companies are going to – the future – as they emerge and figure out what they're going to do, they're looking for the talent. And so it doesn't take long to look at articles of, of people moving out of Silicon Valley. It doesn't take long for you to figure out that people up north, you know, in the, in the Northeast states are starting to think about where they're going to move to for a variety of reasons. Um, the low hanging fruit is of course taxation and different and shoveling snow and a lot of, and maybe lost their job. So if they lost their job, the very talented individual is now considering where are they going to land? And that transformation of talent is the real thing that's going to be happening. Don't think of it as transformation of wealth. It's a, transfer, it's a transformation of talent. The talent is out there, where that's going to settle in. And to me, my brother, I'm telling you right now, that is the single greatest opportunity we have to really emerge these companies with really, really great people. That's good. It's really good. Yeah. So you're right. We do have to wrap up in a second, <laughs> but Mike, do you have anything you want to wrap us up with any final thoughts, any questions? I mean, there's so many questions I rattled off, but I won't, I won't get into the rabbit hole. I'll just ask you for one little piece. You, you touched on some stock tips. I need to know. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm itching with the stock tips here. So what do I need to get in? I will tell you this, that you need to get into a basket full of stocks, not one, not unless you just have money to play with. Don't, don't day trade. That's a focus on what you're really good at. If you're a good stock trader and that's all you're going to do in your life, then you can do that. But I would highly recommend that you get into a basket full of great stocks, either, you know, and it could be, you know, the basket full from the, the, you know, from the NASDAQ or it could be from the Dow or whatever. So make sure that like any good por portfolio, you have a variety of things, be it real estate, stocks, and cash, and different things. Um, I don't know a stock tip for you because I am not that foolish to think that I have some crystal ball on a company that is going to excel. Um, and so I am, I am an investor in the ones that I mentioned. I do buy the little dabs of those because they're local stocks and I want to know kind of what's going on and they've done really well. Um, you know, I, you know, there's some high risk. I mean, harvest next door is, is, is kind of teetering if they're going to make it or not. You can look online and figure out that. Scenario, but if they make it, they're going to go really big. So that's a high flyer. You might lose everything, but you might get a tenfold out of it as well. Um, but again, um, variety, 
and don't day trade, play it long. Buy the companies that you use. If you, you know, I'm not an Apple believer, but if you use Apple, buy some Apple stock. You know, um, if you're just buy stocks that you use or you see that are emerging and so forth. But a portfolio is the way to go and play it long. Play it long. A little in. bit in, put a little bit in each month or year or whatever, but play it long. Well, thanks for jumping on here and sharing your wisdom with us. Hey, I loved it. Yeah, man, it's always it's always good to hear from you, and um, we know that you're heavily invested in our in our community, and it's always great to just hear what's on your mind. And so, thank you, thank you for coming on the show. I think we should. I think you should have a show like fun places to travel to. Yeah. When this, when this passes, we gotta talk about fun places to travel to, so people can start thinking, you know, about getting out of their little cocoon. I, you know. I love I love Mitch is already trying to slide into his fourth appearance. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, well, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, everybody. Hey. <laughs> hey. The, the podcast, the podcast, bring you businesses and individuals that make you go whoa. Whoa! I didn't hear it, Mitch. I thought you were gonna be prepared. I know. I was. Uh, I did like, like practice. It sounded like a. So I'll, I'll I'll do my. What was I? I was practicing. <laughs> no, you know, whoa, you don't whoa, understand. Whoa! whoa, whoa. Yeah, what like is that? that one? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, we'll see you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.